Hello and welcome to Inside the Outside. I'm Christy Kirk. And I'm Gary Kirk. And this week we have a really fun show for you because what is the most important thing when you're out in the woods, Gary? Um, where you're going to pee. You're wrong, Gary. Staying warm enough or cool enough is the important thing when you're outside. For me, it's staying warm enough even in the middle of summer. And we're going to have some tips for how you can temperature control your overnight stay in the woods. And we're also going to do our very first product review. We're going to be talking about our experiences trying out the Dream Hammock Raven. So here where we live in North Carolina, the temperatures are heating up. It's finally reached a point where when you head out into the woods, you don't need to worry so much about insulation. But in some places of the country, the snow is still flying. So we wanted to talk this week about how to stay comfortable, whether it's staying warm or staying cool in your hammock. And for me, I'm always freezing in the woods, no matter what the temperature. I think there's only one time in all of our camping lives that I have not used both an under and an overquilt on my hammock, and the temperature was 100 degrees, and I still had my underquilt. I remember that trip. And for somebody like me that stays warm most of the time, insulation this time of year is not that big of a deal. But, you know, in the wintertime, I, I definitely want to be able to stay warm. On the paddle trip recently, I was able to go without a quilt at night most of the time, but I still always wanted that underquilt. So to find out how to stay comfortable in a hammock, we reached out to Paul McWalters, the owner of UGQ Outdoors. So, Paul, we really appreciate you joining us today. Um, for those not familiar with UGQ Outdoors, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, we're a, we're a family-owned cottage industry located in Jackson, Michigan, and uh, we specialize in ultralight backpacking, hammocking, quilts, and tarps. I've uh, been in business uh, since the end of 2011. So uh, we've got um, most of our family actually works for us. That's one of the cool things about UGQ is we truly are a family business. It's uh, myself, my wife, and four of our five kids. So what prompted you to get into this cottage quilt making industry? It really came out of necessity. My, my previous uh, career prior to venturing off into the, uh, the cottage industry was uh, home building. And as a lot of people know, uh, we had that massive mortgage market collapse back in uh, 2008, 2009. So that industry dried up and my income stream went to, you know, not very much. And I had a buddy who had a major back surgery and this was like a lifelong best friend. And we would go, you know, on paddle trips, backpacking and all sorts of outdoor adventure. And he could no longer sleep on the ground. Yeah. So he picked up a cheap old hammock from one of the big box stores and brought it along on one of our trips. And we fought and struggled and tried all different ways to figure out how to make it work uh, to get him off the ground and still on our outdoor adventures. And that's kind of what started the ball was I saw that we got him into a hammock and I'm like, people you know, are really using these for backpacking and camping. And at the time, I didn't have the funds to buy my own. So I borrowed my girlfriend, now my wife's mom's sewing machine, made my, <laughs> made my first hammock, made my first quilt, made a tarp, made more gear, made gear for friends, and then eventually kind of followed the natural path of progression and, and turned on a website back in uh, late 2011. So out of necessity. So tell us a little bit about that first quilt. Oh, it was a rough, rough, rough fr Frankenstein quilt. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it got the job done. And the great thing about uh, that time is it, it, it was DIY. It was do it yourself for myself. So there's that sense of pride that even though it was rough looking and it wasn't the best design and, and the quality wasn't there, I still had that sense of pride when I pull it out of my backpack and show my friends. And they're like, oh, my gosh, you made that? And it's like, yep, I made that. 
Yeah, I can totally relate. Um, I, the quilts that we're currently using right now, most of the time are ones that I made. Um, I went to a frosty butt hang this past weekend and, um, was very proud to say, Hey, I'm, I made these. So, you know, the funny thing was, so guys sitting around the fire, it sounded like a quilting bee, uh, but it's just a bunch of, uh, you know, guys sitting around a fire. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Just, you know, you got 10 guys all sat around and we're all talking about sewing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very funny. interesting not, dynamic. Not the norm. <laughs> you know, when I'm out in the general public and, you know, I meet somebody and they, they ask us, you know, yeah, what do you do? Well, we got our own business and we make quilts. And the first thing that pops into their mind are grandma's quilts. And it's like, no, right. no, no, that's not what we're doing. And you show them, they're like, oh, my gosh, I had no idea that these things even existed, let alone that you're making them right here in little old Jacks of Michigan. Yeah. And, you know, the funny thing, too, was like when I first started hearing about quilts for the outdoors, you know, I went through the the grandma's uh, quilt kind of idea. And then I was like, well, you know, really, this is just a sleeping bag, um, you know, without a zipper on it. But it is a little bit more than that. Uh, so how would you explain it to someone else like myself or, you know, in those early days that doesn't really understand why do I need a quilt versus just grabbing that old traditional sleeping bag? Well, the, the first thing I, I do is, is make sure they understand that quilts aren't for everybody. Some people just cannot make that transition from the sleeping bag because they, they like that cocooned feeling. Um, but a quilt is a great option for a lot of people um, because it's a sleeping bag stripped right down to the basics. You know, yeah. when, you're, when you're in a sleeping bag and you're laying on a pad or you're laying in a hammock, that insulation that's underneath you is compressed and provides no insulative value whatsoever. So let's get rid of it. That's one thing a quilt does. Two is a lot of people find the sleeping bag restrictive. You know, it's difficult to sleep in a figure four. It's difficult to pull your legs up. You know, it's difficult to roll around in. Um, so by having an open backed quilt, your level of comfort in all those different positions increases tenfold. And then third, the, the hood on a sleeping bag. You know, when it's in, in warmer weather, you don't need that hood. Um, so why not just shed it off the quilt, reduce your weight, reduce your pack volume, and use other gear that you typically have on colder hikes, and that would be, you know, appropriate headgear, whether it's a, a scully or a fleece beanie or, you know, something that insulates your head to replace the hood off the mummy sleeping bag. So a lot of people can't adapt out of that sleeping bag, but for many people, they find that the quilt is a much more comfortable, much lighter, much more packable experience. Yeah, I would definitely agree. And there are some people I've talked to that even though they're into the hammock camping world, uh, they still like a sleeping bag in the uh, hammock with them, but they'll use an underquilt or some type of a pad or something like that. And for me, the underquilt is the most important of the two components. I can have a lighter top quilt if I have a really good underquilt, keeping that air circulation underneath me at a minimum. Yeah, I'd agree with you completely on that. We have a lot of uh, new customers who call and that'll be, you know, one of their first questions. What should I get first? Should I get a top quilt? You know, if this is for a hammock camper. Should I get a top quilt or should I get an underquilt? And I always recommend the underquilt because inside the hammock, you can use your old sleeping bag. You can use a fleece blanket. There's so many different things that you may already own that you could use inside the hammock to insulate you. But under the hammock is such a specialized piece of equipment that a proper underquilt is the best way to go. I know you said that you started your company in around uh, 2011. Um, you had done some DIY prior to that. When did you get into hammock camping? Uh, were you a tent camper first and transitioned, or did you just get into straight into hammock camping? Yeah, I've been, I've been backpacking, oh, probably going on 25, 30 years. 2010 was when I discovered the hammock. So for whatever, 20, 20 years or so, it was primarily in a tent on the ground in all different sorts of weather conditions from, from you know, summer backpacking trips to one winter ascent on the Diamond in uh, Rocky Mountain National Park, all, all on the ground on a pad with a sleeping bag. So I found a hammock in 2010 and 
think since then I've been on the ground two or three times. So definitely a convert to the hammock. For, for me at, uh, at my age, I'm you know, 51, the comfort of the hammock. I'm not worried about a rock in my back or a root in my knee as I'm crawling into the tent. The cleanliness of the hammock, because all my gear is off the ground, so it doesn't matter if it's raining out or not, I'm not getting everything all muddy. Um, and the three, the solid night's sleep, the repeatability of that bed, that sleep platform, being able to set your hammock up identical night after night after night. So you get a great night's sleep and you're not tossing and turning and you're well rested to hit the trail again the next morning. Hammocks really are so comfortable. If people haven't tried them, they're certainly worth trying. I'll never go back to a tent if I don't have to. Yeah. But I'm wondering, you you told us a little bit about how you got started, you know, making these in your in your home. What was the turning point when you went, I need to turn this into a business? Um, well, like I said, I was working in the, the home construction industry. I was still in the industry in, in 2011. Um, in late 2011, it was actually December of 2011 when I turned the website on for the first time. I actually said, okay. Let's do this. Uh, the, the entire goal was just to make a little bit extra money to supplement my adventures because my <laughs> construction industry career still wasn't, hadn't rebounded on income. Um, so I needed some extra money. And that, that first month, I had 27 orders. And I've got another 50 hour a week plus job. And the second month, I had like 30 plus orders. And the third month, it was like 40. And it was about four months into having both the full-time job in the construction industry and the website going that I had to make that decision. So are you full-time uh, UGQ now? Oh, I've been, been full-time since uh, I officially left the construction industry. I gave my notice and left in, in uh, June of 2012. That's nice. terrific. Now, I know you said your wife and children work for the company. How many total employees do you have? That's it. There's just the six of us. Oh, okay. Yeah. So still, still what I consider a cottage company. You know, some of the companies that are considered cottage company that have 100 employees, I'm not sure if that's a cottage company anymore. So um, you said that you made your first hammock. Um, are you still currently using homemade hammocks or UGQ oh, no. hammocks? Okay, no, no. so what, what kind of hammock are you using these days? Uh, I am using a Dream Hammock Danger Bird. So it's 11 foot and it has, it's made out of a one ounce single layer fabric. And it is by far my favorite hammock I've ever owned. And it's just one of the most comfortable hammocks I've ever had. And I've had a lot, trust me, because <laughs> being, <laughs> being in this industry, you know, we need to purchase a lot of different hammocks to try them out with our gear. Yeah. So uh, other than the dream hammock, it's obviously, uh, you know, Randy makes some fantastic hammocks. Um, are there any others that are favorites of yours that you might, um, you know, recommend to a friend or, you know, maybe take out on a different outing? Well, there's there's um, basically two different types of hammock. You've, you've got your gathered end hammock, like the Dream Hammock um, that I'm currently using, and then the other type of hammock is the Bridge Hammock. Um, and if I had to make a recommendation there, because I've owned one, I think we actually still have one. The Ridge Runner it would be the other type of hammock that I may recommend to a friend who's not finding themselves comfortable in a gathered end hammock. I might say, hey, give this bridge hammock a try. Uh, just like with quilts, hammocks aren't for everybody either. Uh, true. I don't think there's one size fits all in, in anything related right. to the outdoors. It really is personal preference. But you know, you, you specialize in quilts. You make lots of different products, but you're, you're really well known for your quilts. And I wonder what's special about your quilts? What sets them apart from other cottage vendors in this world? Well, the every, everybody makes a, a good, solid product. Um, but I think, you know, a couple of the things that set UGQ apart from the rest is 
our attention to detail, um, our well thought out design and our customer service. Um, it's not uncommon for me to answer most emails within minutes of receiving them or the other, the other one is just answering the phone. You know, as the, we're a business. If somebody's calling, answer it. If there's a customer calling. He's got a question. Answer it. Uh, but you wouldn't believe the number of times that I'll answer the phone and I'm like, finally, somebody answered. You're getting my business. Right. It's just those simple things that can set you apart from, from the rest. And that really does matter in this industry that you're in. Um, you know, there's a lot of people making a lot of products out there and there's a lot of people making good products out there. But if you don't have that attention to detail and that customer service, uh, good bedside manner, you're not going to retain them. You know, they'll go find somebody else. So it really does matter. Yeah, we have a very high uh, return customer rate. Um, and I equate that to the quality of the product and the customer service that they receive before, during, and after the sale, because you know the, the sale isn't over once you ship the product. You need to take care of your customers after the sale too with any questions or problems that they may have, you know, or any questions on setup, um, so that you know they have the full experience. Yeah, customer service is so important. And it's so nice, especially when you're starting, well, at any point, in hammock camping, you know, you come up with questions and to have someone to bounce those off of is really helpful. Right. I'm wondering if you have any new products in the pipeline. Um, we always have something cooking. <laughs> I mean, we just we just reintroduced our scully, our, our down beanies. Uh, they had disappeared off our offerings for, for about 18 months due to a couple of different reasons. One, we just became so darn busy on the quilt side that we didn't have the, the staff to make those on a custom by order basis. Um, and two, we needed to find a way to, to simplify the build so that we could make them more efficiently so we could free up a little bit of staff to do that. So that, that was one, one big thing we worked on over the last six months was to get those scullies back on the website because it, it was you know, two or three times a week there's an email you know you used to sell these where are they i want one so we've got to take care of what they want so they are back uh we're we're offering them more in a, a limited palette right now where they're they're pre-made which is great because then you order it and it ships there's no ordering yet and waiting uh but we're hoping to bring back the full-blown custom option for those where you'll be able to personalize it with every color you want um, so that's one thing. And we do have a couple of quilts and tarps and stuff on the back burner. Is everything you make custom? Uh, we have, in the, in the quilts, we have two different product lines. We have the fast track quilts, which typically ship one to three business days. Uh, so there's, we consider those semi-custom because that product is sewn and ready for down. So that allows you to, as a customer to pick your flavor of down, 800, 850, uh, add over stuff if you want. Uh, you can do a zippered foot box on the banded or the box flat sewn on the back. So you've got a few options that you can choose from and it'll still ship in one to three business days. So that's, for a lot of people, that's important because you know we've all kind of got this Amazon Prime mentality now, and I got to have it now. Right. It's my quilt. It's my quilt, and I want it now, uh, is what I like to say. Uh, so, and then we have our full custom line where you can pick everything all the fabrics, all the colors, all the thread, all the down, everything. So, we do semi custom and full custom. And then we actually do take on truly custom projects too, where that's not a quilt we're offering, but a customer has contacted us and basically commissioned us to build them a one-off product. And that's something that you just don't get from those big box companies, being able to pick up the phone, talk to you directly and, you know, brainstorm with you and say, I've got this really cool idea and you can help them bring that to reality. Correct. I can help bring that to reality or I can help bring them to reality too. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. <laughs> it goes both ways. Two, two lanes of traffic there. 
Uh, there certainly are. There certainly are. <laughs> some, some projects just aren't feasible. So and once I kind of walk them through that, and it's like, yeah, we can do that. I mean, I, that's another thing with me. You know, I'm not going to say I'm brutally honest, but I'm honest with our customers about what can and cannot be done. Like, like I recently had a potential customer contact us looking for a very lightweight down throw to use in the tent over the top of their sleeping bags. And I'm like, well, I'm sure we can help you out with that, but have you looked at the Costco down throws? Right. Everybody knows about the Costco down throw. I'm like, for 50 bucks, you can get two of them from Costco. You're going to be looking at 250 plus for one from us. Exactly. So, you know, while, while I, I want the sale, I also don't want the customer to spend more money than they need to. And that, that guy was super... Uh, appreciative that I was that honest with him. And he's like, next time we're actually looking for quilt quilts, we'll be back. And, and that's how you get those return customers. You're going to be a, a genuine uh, partner in this. You're not just looking to make a buck. Correct. I want to make sure the customer is taken care of. And I also want to build, you know, long-term relationships with them. That's yeah. why we have such a high return rate for our customers. And have customers down south that we're friends with and customers in Texas we're friends with and customers out on the West Coast we're friends with. And, and um, you know, that's that's important too. you know, building those friendships. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Now, I imagine running the company takes so much of your time now. Do you still get to go on trips on multi-day hiking or camping trips? Not as much as I'd like to. <laughs> but I, I still do. I, I carve out uh, a minimum of one longer trip a year. Um, I have a tradition. Uh, one of my long-standing friends, boy, it's got to be going on 20 years now that we go backpacking every year. And he was in, in the same town I'm currently in for a long time. And then he moved. Actually, we had a group of friends, there were about four or five of us, and they've scattered across the country. So once a year... We get together, you know, sometimes it's just two of us, sometimes it's six of us, but once a year we plan this trip and we all get together, fly into an airport and grab a car and drive off to the Wind River Range or, or the, you know, North Cascades or Olympia Peninsula and spend a week in the woods catching up. That's really fun. Now, yeah. what time of year do you prefer to be in the woods? For that particular trip, we always target early to mid-September. Because uh, the crowds are gone. Ah. Mm -hmm. And still not, the, the big snows haven't started falling yet. Right. Although you can get caught, which we have been caught. Definitely. <laughs> I have an, a great uncle that lives in Idaho, and uh, he often will post pictures on Facebook. And, you know, when I think it's cold or when I think, oh, my gosh, look at the snow. And then I see his pictures. I think, oh, you know, I've got it easy here in North Carolina. But, yeah, we've been caught in a couple of... Uh, blizzard whiteout conditions in mid-September in the mountains. So they never know what you're going to get. So in addition to these, at least one annual, you know, real getaway trip, what, what kind of um, outings do you like to do? Do you do any car camping or short uh, trips, you know, overnights, weekends or whatever? Uh, the wife loves car camping. So that's definitely on the list. So we've got, uh, got a couple of, I mean, we're, we're fortunate here in Michigan that we have beautiful campgrounds up north some yeah. you know, rustic campgrounds. We, we try to stay out of the big state park systems uh, just because it's tent city and a lot of chaos and, and dogs barking and campfire smoke everywhere. Uh, and for my wife and I, we like to go and relax and we don't find that relaxing. So we go to the state forest campgrounds or the U.S. Mm -hmm. Forest Service campgrounds and they're all you know rustic, hand pop, vaulted toilets. So that tends to keep the the crowds down but uh, we're we're super fortunate here in michigan so before we wrap up here uh do you have any parting words for our listeners uh, any in uh, wisdom you would like to instill upon them just get out there and enjoy the great outdoors play life life's too short i need to take my own advice life's too short to spend it working away you know make sure you get out there and experience all this world has to offer as I get older, I appreciate that advice more and more. You know, when I was when I was younger, it was you know, work, 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 work. Uh, but as I'm getting older, 
it's becoming more important to find that time to connect with nature and, and connect with friends and connect with family. Those are great words to end on. I couldn't agree more. You know, everybody needs to take the time, get up and get out. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, Paul, it's been a pleasure talking to you. We really appreciate you taking the time to uh, sit down and talk to us. I'm sure the listeners are going to get a lot out of this. If our listeners want to find out more about UGQ Outdoors, where could they uh, go and look for you? Uh, they could find us at UGQOutdoor.com. Uh, we're also on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Fantastic. We'll be sure to uh, post links to everything in our show notes. We really appreciate you joining us today. Not a problem, Gary. Christy, I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for having me on. So, Christy, you finally got to get out and hang in the dream hammock this weekend. What did you think? I did. And, um, yeah, it was really fun. And I will say that my experience with hammocks is different than yours. Because when we first started hammock camping, I did not think I was going to like it. And I didn't want to invest in a hammock. So my first hammock was literally a Groupon hammock that I got a deal on. And then I told you about it, like, look at this great deal. And you were like, are you kidding? That's not even really a hammock. But it was. And I used it on many trips and it's totally comfortable. And it's one of those things where you don't know what you're missing until you try something like the dream <laughs> hammock. And I've tried many different hammocks in between. Um, but this this really, you know, it. it Dream hammocks have a reputation for a reason. They've earned it. And I definitely experienced that. Now, we need to say that this hammock was sent to us um, in PR. Yes. So we need to reveal that. Um, that doesn't influence the review. Our reviews are always going to be our honest, unvarnished truth. Um, but it was sent to us. Yes, Randy was kind enough to send us the Dream Hammock Raven. And uh, for the geeks out there like me, uh, specs on that is an 11-foot hammock. It's 58 inches wide. It's a single layer of 1.6-ounce Hyper-D diamond ripstop. And the weight on it is just a little over 20 ounces. I used it on the paddle trip down in South Carolina. Um, so it was my home for a week. Um, super comfortable. Um, as a point of reference, my primary hammock for quite some time has been an Eno double nest. I liked the double nest, not because I could fit two people in it, but because I'm a big guy, I'm six feet tall, 230 pounds, and I wanted to be able to have room to move around. It was a fine hammock, but as you said, you don't really know what you're missing until you get in something that is truly tailored for what what this is. And the, the dream hammock lived up to uh, my expectations. I slept like a dream, no pun intended, maybe a little, um, every night that I was in it. Well, what I liked about it was the roominess because I'm 5'10". I'm not a petite flower. So it's nice to have some space. Um, it was comfortable. I didn't get that ridge, you know, that that hard part that'll go down your back if you've ever hammock camped and probably done it the way I do which is probably not the way you're supposed to do it you sometimes get that hard piece that goes down your back that didn't happen I love that it had a built-in bug net because the bugs love me and so it was great to have a built-in bug net and the quality of the material I know you told us what kind it is and I know that that means a lot to some people who are listening <laughs> But what it meant to me was that the material felt almost cottony. Yes. It was just more comfortable than some of the other hammocks I've tried out. So I loved it. Obviously, you can customize these to the nth degree. You can get anything you want in them pretty much in any color. Um, but what I loved was just that I was comfortable and I had space to move around and be comfortable. And there was storage. I love sure. that there are pockets where I can hide things or there's there's even like a sleeve pocket. And as soon as I saw that, I'm like, that's where my bear spray will be <laughs> um, right above me. Easy access in the night. So I, I thought it was a great, comfortable hammock. I know that they're more expensive. They are much more of an investment. 
And um, I probably made a $20 investment when we started hammock camping. Right. This is probably 10 times that investment. I don't know the price point. Do you? I think the ready to ship version on these is around $125. Oh, okay. So it's not an enormous investment. Um, now, Randy did include a couple things with ours. So we had the Ridgeline organizer that you were talking about. So it has six pockets in it, plus it's hollow. So it's double sided and has like a tube in the middle. So you can uh, put stuff in there. Um, it had the peak uh, storage in it, which is really nice for like sticking your um, uh, pillow in there when you're not using it. Or, you know, if you wanted to have it on the other end, you could maybe stuff your socks in there or whatever it is that you want. So it's a nice little tucked away um, organizer. And then he also included the gear sling, which was nice. It's sort of like an extended length, double ended stuff sack that hangs off your ridge line with these little uh, shot cord prussic loops. So you can slide it wherever you want it. I, when I was on the camping trip, used it for my PJs. Whenever I wasn't um, in the hammock, I could have that stored there. So when I went to go hang it up at night, I had a nice, clean set of PJs in there waiting on me when it was uh, bedtime. So that was super nice. I also liked, as you pointed out, the width of this is really nice. There's a lot of room in there to get in there and move around. I was able to lay on my side. I was able to, you know, get that figure four position. Everything felt nice and roomy. Yeah. If I had one critique, it would just be, and this is just about style. It's not even about this hammock in particular. It's the pullout. The need for the pullout. I don't love having to do something extra when I hang up a, a, a hammock. However, I do like how it kept the material um, off of me and, yes. and made more room. So that's not really a critique. It's probably, I'm getting accustomed to the pullouts because sure. for me, I want a hammock. I want to just throw it up there, be ready to get inside. And, and with this one, you do have to have a pullout. You don't have to, but it felt better with a pullout. Without it felt the pullout, the, the bug net is going to lay uh, over against your face. With the pullout, there's no problem on that. And, um, you know, it'd be neat if maybe somebody could invent a way to put some type of a little rigid, flexible something in the edge there that would maybe cause that arch to be natural so that you wouldn't have to have a pullout. You wouldn't have to have that extra stake and a line to be able to pull it out. It's really not that big of a deal, though. It's really minor. I know there are people listening right now who are screaming <laughs> at whatever device they're listening at going, oh, my gosh, it's just a pullout. It is. It's no big deal. Again, it's the only possible critique I have. I love this one. And I think if you're serious about hammock camping, it's worth investing in a good hammock. So something I, I'll point out, totally cosmetic, did not influence the quality of my sleep at all, but I really did like the fact that the bug net was Moroccan blue, just like the hammock was. That, to me, really was sort of this eye-catching thing that made it stand out against all the other hammocks I'd had experience with. I don't know if other people were doing colored bug nets, but if you're not, you should be, because that really made it stand out as compared to just any other hammock out there. Yeah, I will say that I really liked the material that the bug net was made out of, and I don't know the name of the material, but we'll include it in the show notes, folks. <laughs> I just liked it compared to some other bug nets that I've experienced because I thought it was sheerer. So you had your view wasn't as obstructed. And um, but, you know, I love a built in bug net. I, I don't even understand why I had a hammock without a built in bug net before. Yeah, we sported the Franke bug nets for quite some time. You know, we were being very frugal and making sure that we wanted to make these different investments. And, you know, it's not something that you go willy nilly and do. That's why we're doing these gear reviews to hopefully help you inform yourself before you go out there and spend the money. Here's something that sets Dream Hammock apart from a whole lot of the other people out there, and that's that you can pick up the phone or or type up an email and get a hold of Randy and he will customize it exactly how you want. So it's like having a custom hammock tailor on speed dial. I think if I called Randy and said, hey, I want a custom inside the outside uh, designed hammock, he would hook me up down to the final stitch. Yeah, but I also think you don't have to customize it because nope. the, the version that they, their standard version was terrific. My two biggest takeaways about this hammock were space and comfort. I think those are together. And the feel of the fabric was really nice. And it looks good. 
All right. It's really cute. That's it it is. I had several people when I shared this on social media, uh, several people that I work with that I was shocked. Some people still don't know that you can hammock camp. And they were like, what kind of hammock is that? And then I was explaining, you know, hammock camping. And then they're like, oh, my gosh. And I showed them a few links and they were just blown away by it, it, it's a cool looking hammock. Yeah. Well, I think we've raved long enough and yeah. I think that it's clear what our verdict is. <laughs> These are good hammocks. They're thumbs great. Up. They're a total thumbs up and really worth the investment. Inside the Outside is proudly brought to you by Terrapin Outfitters. Terrapin Outfitters is an innovative company that specializes in developing clothing and gear that enhance people's enjoyment of outdoor activities. Check them out at terrapinoutfitters.com. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Look for the handle Inside the Outside Show. For links to our social media and other stuff that we talk about in the show, be sure to check out the show notes and our website, insidetheoutsideshow.com.